Thus far, we have discussed how time intervals and distances between two events are measured by observers moving at a constant velocity relative to each other. Special relativity also alters our ideas about momentum and energy. Recall that when two or more objects interact, the principle of conservation of linear momentum applies if the system of objects is isolated. This principle states that the total linear momentum of an isolated system remains constant at all times. An isolated system is one in which the sum of the external forces acting on the objects is zero. The conservation of linear momentum is a law of physics and, in accord with the relativity postulate, is valid in all inertial frames of reference. That is, when the total linear momentum is conserved in one inertial reference frame, it is conserved in all inertial reference frames. As an example of momentum conservation, suppose that two people are watching two billiard balls collide on a frictionless pool table. One person is standing next to the pool table and the other is moving past the table with a constant velocity. Since the two balls constitute an isolated system, the relativity postulate requires that both observers must find the total linear momentum of the two ball system to remain constant before, during, and after the collision. For this kind of situation, in classical physics we define the classical linear momentum of an object to be the product of its mass m and velocity v. As a result, the magnitude of the classical momentum is p equals mv. As long as the speed of an object is considerably smaller than the speed of light, this definition is adequate. However, when the speed approaches the speed of light, an analysis of the collision shows that the total linear momentum is not conserved in all inertial frames of reference if one defines linear momentum simply as the product of mass and velocity. In order to preserve the conservation of linear momentum, it is necessary to modify this definition. The theory of special relativity reveals that the magnitude of the relativistic momentum must be defined as p equals mv divided by the square root of 1 minus v squared divided by c squared, where the numerator is equal to the classical linear momentum. The total relativistic momentum of an isolated system is conserved in all inertial reference frames. From this equation, we can see that the magnitudes of the relativistic and non-relativistic momenta differ by the same factor of 1 divided by the square root of 1 minus v squared divided by c squared that occurs in the time dilation and length contraction equations. Since this factor is always less than 1 and occurs in the denominator, the relativistic momentum is always larger than the non-relativistic momentum. The plot shows how the two quantities differ as the speed v increases through the ratio of the momentum magnitudes, relativistic to non-relativistic, as a function of v. According to the relativistic momentum equation, this ratio is just 1 divided by the square root of 1 minus v squared divided by c squared. The graph shows that for speeds attained by ordinary objects, such as cars and planes, the relativistic and non-relativistic momenta are almost equal because their ratio is nearly 1. Thus, at speeds much less than the speed of light, Either the non-relativistic momentum or the relativistic momentum can be used to describe collisions. On the other hand, when the speed of the object becomes comparable to the speed of light, the relativistic momentum becomes significantly greater than the non-relativistic momentum, and the relativistic linear momentum equation must be used. Consider the following example. The particle accelerator at Stanford University is 3 kilometers long, and accelerates electrons to a speed of 0 0.9999999997 c. What is the relativistic momentum of such an electron? We start with the relativistic momentum equation and plug in the speed and the mass of the electron, giving a value of 1 times 10 to the negative 17 kilogram times meter per second. Therefore, the relativistic momentum exceeds the classical momentum by a factor of 1 divided by the square root of 1 minus v squared divided by c squared, which in this case is equal to 4 times 10 to the 4th, or by a factor of 40,000.